you have the right to remain silent forever. Maniac Cop. Hello everybody, my name is Mr. Hat, and today we're going over Maniac Cop, which came out in 1988, stars Tom Atkins, Bruce Campbell, and is directed by William Lustig, who directed 1980's Maniac. Knowing all that, sounds like a great movie up front, right? Eh, Tom Atkins, Bruce Campbell, director of Maniac, can't go wrong. Yes, you can. This is one of those late 80s, you know, formulaic horror movies where they just take different ideas. Let's have a killer Uncle Sam, which ironically is what this director went on to do with Uncle Sam. Let's do a clown. Let's do a doctor, a dentist guy, a cop now, a firefighter. Have they done that yet? I'm not sure. And now we got a killer cop, right? And it's basically about a killer cop, maniac cop. You know what it's about just by the the title, the cover. You look at it, you know what it's about. It's as simple as that. A cop goes on a killing spree. Meanwhile, Tom Atkins has to figure out who is doing it and why. Or is it about that? This movie doesn't have very good story direction. I can't tell what the story is about because then it's about Bruce Campbell. But I'll get into that in my negatives. Okay, so what do I like about this movie? First up, like I was saying earlier, Tom Atkins, at Tom Atkins and Bruce Campbell, great people from Evil Dead and Tom Atkins from all kinds of shit. Night of the Creeps, his favorite movie he's ever made. Halloween 3, uh, the remake of My Bloody Valentine, all kinds of stuff. I love Tom Atkins. He's a great guy in real life. You, any interview you see of him, he's just he looks like an awesome guy. I want to meet him. They're honestly the best actors in this movie. The acting across the board from other people besides the main two, they're okay. It's subpar, but it's not terrible. I've seen terrible. I like that this movie kind of has a mystery to it. Like, you think it's a mystery who done it because they're giving you these red herrings, like... Oh, maybe it's Tom Atkins. He's lost his mind. You know, because they're like, oh, he's depressed and his partner died a long time ago. And then it's like, yeah, I'll get into it. But they're giving you these red herrings, but it's really not who done it. Because at the, yeah, I'll get into it. Okay, I'll say the spoilers later. All right. But I like that there's kind of a who done it aspect, even though it's done very fucking terrible. Like I said, story direction all over the place. What what are they trying to go for? But they make Bruce Campbell a red herring. He's you know cheating on his wife, and he has like some, he's doing marriage counseling with his wife, so they're making him look like he could be a, the bad cop. So yeah, just red herrings. I like who done it, but, but this one wasn't done that well. I like the killer cop idea. It's different. You know, I've seen Killer Santas before. Killer Cop, that's more believable. So, and I like that he has like a baton that's like a blade. He like come just like, a, and then he's very strong. I like that his character is like ambiguous. Like, is he alive? Is this guy even human? Is he like Michael Myers? Is he bordering that line between like supernatural and like mortal? I almost forgot that word. Is he mortal? Is he immortal? Like, what is he? Is he dead? Is he alive? I don't know. And I like that the tone of this movie, despite it going for a tone I didn't see coming at all, you hear a maniac cop, you're like, it's gonna be a horror comedy, right? It's not. But the tone's consistent. Now, before we jump into those negatives, let's go over my favorite scene. The Clapper War for Best Scene is going to go to the police station massacre. Definitely got to suspend belief, knowing that he just mowed through all these people without making a single noise. But it kind of reminds me of Halloween 4, when Michael Myers did it. And the hottest chick in this movie is definitely going, going to Mallory. She's the only chick in the film, besides people who don't speak or have a speaking role. So yeah, I have to give it to Mallory. All right, let's go into those negatives. I was saying it earlier, it's story direction. This movie's all over the place. The first half of this film is about Tom Atkins, and you're like, oh, he's the main person. And you almost forget about Bruce Campbell because he takes a backseat. And then the second, like the third act of this movie is like, no, it's Bruce Campbell's movie. It's all about him now. It's like, what? They give you all this like backstory in this one scene for the maniac cop, and it's just completely wasted. Like It's not even interesting. Like He was a good cop. Who got arrested somehow? I guess the maybe he was making people jealous. This is like is it like hot fuzz where they got jealous? So they sent Simon Pegg somewhere else. I don't know, but he got arrested. And when you're a cop and you're in jail, people see you, they recognize you, and they kick his ass, they kill him, or is he dead? The mortician just I don't know. Whatever. This I'll try to keep the spoiler free for now, and then we'll go into a spoiler discussion. But the thing these like they just waste this backstory. It's dumb it's really dumb conveniences this movie has conveniences in it where it's like things just like really how how do they how did this person know by calling bruce's wife that 
and saying something like, you know, your husband's going to go out killing people would make her follow Bruce that night. Just things that just are so convenient and stupid. This movie does slow down considerably in the second act and it gets boring. But the third act, like the kills are pretty quick in the first act. And he goes on his killing spree and then the second act slows down. It's when Tom Atkins is doing the investigating. And then the third act is where shit gets a little bit quicker and there's like a big old massacre at this police station. We get this flashback from the maniac cop. He has this flashback of his time in prison and there's like 50 shots of the same shit like in slow motion. It's like, I get it. Pick up the speed. Another thing I was saying earlier that I didn't want to spoil too much about how this was a whodunit, but really not really, like not really a whodunit was because this movie opens up with the cop, the maniac cop, and his name tag's right there. It says Cordell. And we know Tom Atkins' name, and we know Bruce Campbell's name. They're not Cordell. So we know who the killer is. So why they wasted any time, like, suggesting maybe it is Tom Atkins. You know, he's depressed. Maybe it's Bruce Campbell. He's cheating on his wife, and his wife caught him, and blah, blah, blah. It's like, well, why are you setting up these red herrings when it's not even necessary it's like stupid it's wasting time we know who the killer is i like how mallory is in the interrogation room with campbell she can't get out she has to buzz to like let someone let her out and then after like all these killings go on she just leaves the room somehow like someone buzzed her out no one buzzed her out so how does she get out makes no sense and i like how another cop handcuffs himself to mallory all right like that's not how you book somebody like book her okay Oh, handcuff me to her. Why? That's stupid. This movie has obvious stuntmen when, you know, stunts are happening. People falling out this and crashing that. Like, just like stuntmen's like, that's not Bruce Campbell. That's not Tom Atkins. It's terrible. And I like how this maniac cop, he doesn't feel pain in the whole film. But then towards the end, he starts to feel pain. And it's like, really? Which is it? Mallory claims she shot him in the face. But when we, when we see his face, there's no bullet holes. So she either lied or there's a continuity mistake. They didn't put holes in his face. So she's a liar. Somebody's lying. What happened? And the climax of this movie just feels so rushed and just like so unsatisfactory. Like really, this is what we built up to. And the whole story just makes no sense. And I'll get into it in my spoiler discussion. But yeah, the story just like, it just makes you ask questions. Like, Why did he do that? Why was this... Like, it's, seriously, it's stupid. All the kills in this movie are lame. They're all stabs off camera. You can't see shit. People getting stabbed here, neck broken here, and a woman slammed up against the wall a few times. And it's like, that killed her? I guess so. And there's no nudity. We got a sex scene, no nudity. So now let's go into the spoiler discussion. Like I said, this movie starts with like this five minute montage of like the maniac cop gearing up he's got his belt on his shoes his hat and then it crossfades to new york city which by the way lots of this film were shot in la and towards this pier what does pier like what's the what's the symbolism of this pier by the way like why is the mania cop hanging out at the pier don't know just weird things i'm like why is this why is that no answers why is the mania cop framing bruce campbell he doesn't know this fucker seriously does not know him so why why so many questions and the story directions all over the place it's so it's shot terribly don't don't watch this movie this could have just been like a fun movie they could have just made like a fun cop killing fucking people for revenge it goes through this like revenge thing where it's like the mania cop he wants to get this specific judge who sentenced him and this uh what are they call main detective fuck seat the chair whatever just certain people like these certain people from 20 years ago before Bruce Campbell, that he wants to get. And I think he gets him pretty fucking quick. But why Bruce Campbell? Why frame him? What's his story? Does, doesn't make sense. Why take Bruce Campbell and then drive him all the way to your pier and then somehow have a hard time opening the door? It should be openable from the back, but he has to, like, ax his way in. It's like, no, I don't think... You, you don't need a key. Just open it. I do like the first kill in this movie because it, like, sets up the bad guy as someone who's very strong. He has super strength. This woman runs up to him after being mugged by two Puerto Ricans. I, I was, it made me laugh because I was thinking of South Park. She runs up to the cop. It's like, there's two Puerto Ricans who tried to rob me. There was a Puerto Rican guy. South Park reference. It made me laugh. But he just picks her up and snaps her neck. And it's like, maniac cop. I like how Tom Atkins tells this journalist to let the entire city of New York know. Which, like I said, doesn't look like New York at all. This movie. Some of it does. Some of it does not. But he lets... 
the journalists tell everybody in the city, like, be aware, there's a maniac cop killing people. He's dressed like a cop. So now the entire city, that's inducing panic. Like, you can get arrested for that shit. So, yeah, somebody needs to go to jail. Tom, Tom Atkins needs to go to jail. Because then a woman, a cop pulls up to help her because she just had her car her car broke down. Conveniently, cop pulls up immediately. Like, I'm here to the rescue you. And she shoots the cop right in the fucking face before the cop even says anything. Just like, roll down your window. Poosh! Blows his face off. Whose fault is that? Well, it's hers because she didn't get attacked before. You know, she could have at least, like, seen if he was the maniac cop. But she didn't. But I don't blame her because... Tom Atkins told the media to tell everybody that there was a cop killing people. I don't think this movie could be made today because there are, like, you know, cops are evil, like, subtext, like, you know, messaging behind this film. Like, everybody's like, yeah, the cops kill people, shoot them in the back. They claim that the perp had an object, but they didn't. Lots of shit's been happening the last five years or so with cops. It's always in the news. You know, cops are racist, cops are that. I don't think this movie could be made today, but I heard they're trying to remake it. But good luck with that. So some might see that as a negative, like this movie's just anti-cop. But I didn't see it that way. I didn't. Um, Bruce's wife gets called apparently every night saying, you know, your husband's a killer, your husband's a killer. And that's because they want her to eventually follow Bruce. So that they can frame Bruce, which, again, why the fuck are they framing Bruce? I feel like this guy, Matt Cordell, who's the maniac cop, could just kill his targets easy peasy. Like, if he's someone who's confirmed dead, why do you need to frame anybody? And then this accomplice of his, Sally, who works at the station, who they all knew was in love with this guy back when he was alive and shit. Like, why wasn't she ever questioned? Or I don't know. Just, why wasn't she ever a suspect? Of anything, I don't know, maybe because it's been 20 years. I guess I just answered my own question. But the fact that the maniac cop immediately after like Tom Atkins finds out that she's helping the maniac cop, the maniac cop slaughters the whole police station without making a sound and then kills his lover slash accomplice just like that, just slamming her up against the wall. And her reason before that was like, he's coming here to kill us. Because he knows I'm no good. Meaning that, you know, because she got caught. Really? And how does he know that she got caught? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. It's so hard to focus in this movie because it's just boring. There's not much going on. The story is stupid. It could, they could have went in so many different other routes. But they decided to do this crime investigative fucking thing. Drama. Weird, stupid shit. Like, it's dumb. The story is so out of whack. And I love how they just treated Tom Atkins as a throwaway character all of a sudden. Literally a throwaway character who gets thrown out the window and dies. And there's like no impact. Like it was like treated as if he was a nobody. Just a random character. It's like no that's fucking Tom Atkins. He's been the main actor this entire film. The person we've been following. And now it's just like randomly like the girl's in the car. And all of a sudden she hears Tom Atkins just falling down to his death. It's like really? That, that, that's his character. He's just, he means nothing no more. And it's very early on. Like, there's still, like, another half hour left to this film. And he's just fucking getting killed off real quick. It's like, what the fuck? Tom Atkins himself, behind the scenes, was like, yeah, I have a problem with this. Why is this happening? It's kind of early in the script, don't you think? And the director was like, no, it's perfect. We like it that way. And even, like, the reveal of, like, Sally, the woman at the police station, working with her lover from 20 years back, who's been confirmed dead, you know, Matt Cordell, was that supposed to be shocking? Because it just wasn't. Like, her performance is, like, it's so heavy-handed. Like, yep, it's her. It's her. She's working with him. So it's like, even that's not accomplished or, you know, set up properly. The whole mystery is dead. There's no mystery. Everything just isn't done well. It's not executed properly. I will say there's a pretty good, decent choreographed fight in a prison. A naked shower prison fight. You don't see that too often. But yeah, then you just get to the end of this movie and it's like, really? All this for this? It's like, I got so many questions, and I've already asked him throughout this whole thing, like, what Bruce Campbell had to do with anything. Like, the whole movie was really just about the maniac cop getting justice for being, you know, set up, or like, Frank, like, he himself was in prison wrong. Like, he was, he was the good cop who got imprisoned and then killed in prison, so now he's out to get the people who arrested him. And he did that. But what Bruce Campbell has to do with any of that is nothing. So it's just stupid. So why, so why take him to the pier? And then it's just so dumb. I feel like I missed something, but there's no fucking way I missed something. I was paying attention the whole time. And then of course we get Evil Lives On. Evil Lives On. I like how they couldn't at least just make it like a Michael Myers thing where it's like, he's still out there. No, the camera pants down and his hand comes out of the water. 
And it's like, really? Well, there goes that mystery, too. No mystery. Just no mysterious, ambiguous ending. It's like, nope. He's there. He's alive. Still. Maniac Cop 2. Maniac Cop, Maniac Cop 3. Directed by the same guy. So I'm sure those are directed lovely. I did hear that Part 2 is better than this one. So maybe I'll check out Part 2. And if it's better, maybe then I'll check out Part 3. But yeah. I do not recommend this film to anybody. So when it comes to Maniac Cop, this movie is very much wasted time. And the Mr. Hat Award will go to the first lady who gets killed. The Puerto Rican reference just made me laugh and it really displays the Maniac Cop's brute strength. And the worst kill is going to Tom Atkins, whose character deserves so much better than to die death by defenestration. And those are my thoughts on Maniac Cop. Let me know what you thought about this movie in the comments below. Is it as good as the rest of the series? Should I go see the second one or third one, or are they just as bad? Warn me in the comments below. Please let me know. Anyways, hit this like button, support this video, and you can become a subscriber today just by clicking on my cartoon face in about five seconds and follow me on social media. And until next time, I'll be you the same.